Are you looking for a way for your students to share videos and presentations? Today we're going to show you how to use Zoom to do exactly that. So today we're going to show you two ways to use Zoom, the video conferencing platform that most of us are familiar with. We're going to talk about creating a free account and we're also going to show how they can create a pro account uh, that has a couple of extra perks. So first we'll talk about the free account. Now anybody can sign up for a free account. Um, basically you go to zoom.us, which is right up here. So if you look at plans and pricing, the free account basically has a couple of limitations. You can host up to 100 participants, which is probably not an issue. Um, a 40 minute maximum for group meetings. And there is an unlimited one-to-one -one meeting, which is kind of cool. The other thing that's nice about a free account is that you can actually record this to your computer. So if you have a PC, uh, or a Mac, you can record this to your hard drive and then you can then send that video recording um, onto your teacher, either using uh, Moodle to upload an assignment uh, or potentially to upload to either YouTube or a cloud service like Google Drive or Dropbox and then send them the link. Now, one of the reasons that you'll notice I didn't mention using email in that is because typically email is limited to a file size and most of the time, any kind of video recording is too large to email. So to get started, it's fairly simple. What we do is we go up here to sign up. It's free. They'll ask a few questions. It'll ask you your date of birth. I'm just going to put something in here and hit continue. And then it's going to ask my email and I'm going to hit sign up, follow the captions. It'll ask you probably for a password. It'll send you a link, all that kind of standard stuff. Now I've already signed up for an account. So I actually have an account, so I'm just going to go and click on the sign in button. So there's my information. I click sign in and boom, I'm now in Zoom. Now, if I want to schedule a meeting, I can go to schedule a meeting with a time and stuff like that. I can join a meeting that already exists or I can host a meeting. Now I want to host a meeting. What I'm going to do is I'm going to host with my video on. Follow the prompts. And this brings me to here. So I'm going to start my video. Hello. Hi, everyone. And I am going to go and start a screen share. All right here, I'm going to share um, my Google Chrome. This could be your PowerPoint, your slides, whatever. Now, the person that's actually hosting the meeting is the person that has to record it. So if you're meeting with three other of your um, um, fellow students and you're doing a presentation, whoever's hosting the meeting is also going to be the person recording the meeting, is also going to be the person typically controlling the slides. So if there's a slide deck and you want to advance the things, typically that person would kind of be doing all of that. Now I can have other people join me. We can all talk about this web page or PowerPoint, what have you, and it works just like a standard Zoom meeting. But what's nice about it is if you go up here into the sharing under the more option, you can see that I can actually record it. So I'm going to record it without audio. Normally you record with audio, but just because I'm recording today, this presentation, I want to make sure that I don't lose my audio to my screen recording. Um, I'm now recording. So now I'm talking about this. We can go and do different things. We can go and look at different things, change the language here. Just for example, we're just going to go around and click different things. And once we're done our presentation, we just hit stop share and stop recording. We can also pause the recording if we want to just kind of put multiple pieces together and take a minute. We can pause the recording and then pick it up. But for, for my example today, I'm actually going to stop the thing saying I'm done. The recording file we converted to MP4 and the meeting ends. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit end on the meeting for everyone. So we're done. And you'll notice that this dialog comes up. You have a recording that needs to be converted before viewing. So this is converting all of the data that was recorded and making it into a video file. And once that's done, you'll see that it's saved in this location. So for me, it's users, hub, documents, zoom, and that there is this particular meeting that I just did. And I hit save. You can give it a different name if you like. And the video file that we're interested in is this one here that's called zoom right here. And if we double click on that video, you'll notice that there I am in the corner. There's my slide deck. And you'll notice that, you know, all the stuff that I recorded is still in there. So there's me talking and doing my stuff. So what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to give it a meaningful name. We're going to call this Jeff Group Presentation. 
and then possibly the course. So say it's IGCC dot mp4. You could put a date in here, you can put all kinds of stuff. Now this is the actual video that we're going to want. So I'm going to take this video, I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to paste it up here on my desktop just so I have it. So I have this video. So this video here is the video that I'm going to be using. Now there are a number of ways to getting this to your professor. If they have a Moodle shell and they have an assignment due and there's a assignment submission button, you can actually take this and submit it in Moodle just as a video file and they'll receive it. Um, the limitation in Moodle is that it has to be less than a gig. So if I look at this little video file, it's literally five megs. So very, very small. Anything less than a couple of hours will probably be less than a gig. So you can actually put a very, very long video um, on Moodle. You can also upload this to YouTube if you have a YouTube channel, uh, or you can put it on Google Drive and then send the links from that as well. So there's a couple different options to doing that. Now, the big downfall with the free version of using Zoom is the fact that it does not record on Android and or iOS. So if you want to use this with a phone, unfortunately, you can't record it to your phone. You need to have a computer somewhere in the system. Somebody needs to have a computer. Now, other people can join, but you can't necessarily record it on that. So the person that's hosting this using the free account must be on either a PC or a Mac to be able to record this. So I just signed out and now we're just going to go and show you the professional version. Now, why would you want the professional version? Well, the professional version has a couple of added features. Number one, there's no time limit. Number two, it can record to your computer, but it can also record to the cloud, which now means that even if you're on an Android device, you can actually record your presentations. And then what will happen is that Zoom will send you a link of your recording. So it records it on their own servers and it just sends you a link like a URL that you can then cut and paste and email to your professor or submit as an assignment, that sort of thing. Um, and it hosts it on the cloud. So to log in and get a uh, pro account using your Cambrian email. Now your Cambrian email would have been provided to you early on when you registered. It would be under, uh, it would be a uh, at mycambrian.ca email and the information is also available on your mycambrian page. Now to sign up for a pro account using your mycambrian email what you can do is go to cambriancollege.zoom.us and click on sign in. Now this is my Cambrian College email that I've actually used uh, using my single sign-on which is uh, Cambrian College but I'll just change this to Cambrian dot ca my cambrian so this would be you know bob dot home at my cambrian whatever your information is would be in there and you hit next now i get an error message because i don't actually have a my cambrian account but if you have a my cambrian account this will actually work follow the prompts follow what has to be done and within a short time you will actually have a pro account so i'm just going to launch my zoom and this is my Zoom account. To start a meeting on here, we can go to home, click new meeting, we can invite people, we can do whatever you want, start video. Hello everyone, there I am again. And basically what you can do is you can share your screen or your PowerPoint, just like you were before, same idea. And you can record, but you'll notice that in record now, we've got two options. We've got record to this computer, which is the same as the free account. Now, typically I would recommend recording to the cloud if you can, um, just because it offloads all of the recording off of your computer. You don't need a storage space. Uh, there's lots of advantages to it. It creates a transcript. It'll do uh, uh, captioning, all kinds of cool things to your to recording. And it's a lot smaller because it just sends you an actual uh, email at the end. And I'll show you how this works. So I'm gonna to record to the cloud. I'm gonna record without audio because I'm using our microphone again. So recording, I'll turn my camera on for a second. Hello, I'll share my screen, my desktop. There, sharing my desktop now, hello. And then I will hit stop recording. After stopping, you'll see an email notification when the cloud recording is ready. So this will be sent to your uh, My Cambrian email. I'm gonna hit stop recording and I'm gonna end the meeting for all. So now what's happening in the background is that all of the video that was sent over the internet is being compiled, it's being turned into a video. And after a short little while, you will actually receive an email that says, 
um, your recording is ready. So there you have it. There are two ways of signing up for a Zoom account, either a free account or a pro account. Hopefully you found this video helpful.